This episode is brought to you by Ethan Pollitt, who made this trip possible. If you'd like to support future episodes, please follow the link in the description. Shall I introduce it? Yeah, this is this is this is weird, man. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Perspective Philosophy where we try to better our perceptions of the world through philosophical discussion. Today I'm sat with Cosmic Skeptic and Rationality Rules. Exactly. You may have heard of them, I uh, don't know, you know. <laughs> but of course, um, really nice guys and we've just filmed uh, some stuff for a podcast. That's and, correct. And um, I really wanted to get your, your guys' opinion on this. As a vegan and dubious meta-ethical <laughs> position that I, I don't fully understand and... Just, a, say, just a heretic. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Heathen, um, who uh, obviously holds a very similar matter ethical position to me. Um, but, you know, uh, we've all talked about veganism in the past, and I thought it'd be really interesting to talk about this with you guys. Yeah. So, the main thing I'm going to state is that, and I assert, is that a subjectivist cannot be a vegan. And the argument I'm making is one of semantics, in which I say vegan is defined, um, depend, well, depending on the definition of it, we can define it either amorally or morally, ethically. If it's amoral, then a vegan is just someone who is not, at this point in time, using animal products and byproducts, um, which I think most people don't consider vegan. I think that if you're just, you know, when you're asleep, you're not a vegan. Um, right. I think veganism lends itself to a way of being, and that way of being is justified through a given set of, beliefs, like ethical justifications. And when you say subjectivism, you'd say that a subjectivist is saying that they are a vegan because they should be a vegan because of their ethical system, for the most part. Now, what I would say that veganism is, is as the vegan society defines it as, is a thick moral concept. It's developed from, based on various other concepts such as exploitation, cruelty, and benefit. And all of these are based on notions of good and what we uh, and what we should value. Now, unless we instantiate a grounded definition of good, I don't think that these words hold any meaning. What does it mean to exploit someone if there is no such thing as a good? Now, you may say that the good is a thing, depending on that individual. Yeah. I would say that that is actually a language game that is unplayable. You would have one player. So you'd have to be able to assert that there is a definition and that you could know it. And that the way that language works is that the rule must be separate to its interpretation. And this is Wittgenstein. So if you have a rule which governs the defin- like the, the way in which a, a word works, its application, its meaning, its use, that must be separate from its interpretation of whether you've used it correctly. So if I say, um, I am a vegan, or I am um, a Geordie, the word Geordie or vegan must relate to something other than my interpretation of what it means to be a vegan or a Geordie. And that rule is defined within a language game and an inference between more than one individual where we agree that this is what the word means. Otherwise, my interpretation could be the same as the rule, in which case I could go, I am a Geordie. And then in the same breath, I could go, I am not a Geordie. And both statements would be right because my interpretation of Geordie has shifted in each case. Embedded, this is uh, essentially in my understanding and my understanding has shifted, therefore the meaning itself has shifted. And this means it would be P and not P simultaneously would force a contradiction. Now what I'm saying is that with veganism, this happens with good. Yeah, but it wouldn't be the case that P and not P is true. It would just be uh, the case that Ooh. So, so what you are calling P and what you are then calling not P, right? So, so, so the actual uh, the actual substance mm -hmm. of the belief is is not contradictory, right? Just because your interpretation has changed, what you, what you meant in the first case is still true as far as you're concerned. How would you know? And if it's true, then it's true. Well, like if you're saying that, like if what you mean, if you, if you come from a subjectivist worldview that says that you know I, when I say that I think that this is good, um, it's in accordance with some kind of subjective principle that I have. Uh, and then you shift 
and then you say, I'm no, no longer convinced of this, like that's not a contradiction, right? You're not believing both at the same time. And if you do believe both yeah. at the same time, like then it would be a contradiction. What right? I'm saying is that the principle itself changes definition depending on your interpretation of it. Could, it, could there not be multiple definitions? Well, there could Cause, be. Because one yeah. thing you mentioned at the beginning is about how this is really dependent on, on the definition of vegan. If we say that a vegan is somebody who doesn't eat animal product, products, um, really ethics has absolutely no relation whatsoever. Yeah, so I mean, you, could, so you would just say if somebody doesn't eat, as we do actually, of many, many animals that are, don't have the uh, conscious uh, cognitive apparatus that we have, such as uh, certain, certain mammals that are, that are herbivores, we'd say they're vegan. Yeah, I mean, you, you, to your definition, they're not vegan. Well, this is the, this is the thing. Um, would you say that someone was a vegan whilst um, Wait, a attempting to kill an animal, but was unsuccessful? Like, oh, you? yeah, interesting. Oh, uh, I see, because then you're, you're saying that it is trying, intending to cause harm to an animal. Yeah. So then you make it a switch from um, whether or not they, they take um, animal products, uh, consume them, let's say, or whether or not they are they attempt trying to. Yeah. To take and that's still, that's still just take. descriptive. That's still not a moral. Yeah, but, but uh, that, I think that's I think that's what I'd say. I'd say there's, there's no there's more no moral component there. That's still descriptive. I think if we're being purely descriptive about uh, anything, then I'd say that then it, it's compatible in a holistic sense with anything. So you say you're a vegan when you're in prison if you're not being fed animal products. But I don't think that's what vegans intend veganism to mean. I don't think that it's applied use. The meaning of the word is not mean the use. Can it not it's, be multiple definitions? Though? Oh, absolutely. You not say, there's multiple yeah, okay. definitions of any word, like when it depending on the on the language game. Like, I understand. Um, but yeah. I would say that like the intended use of veganism is to reflect the philosophy and a way of being. So it has to be like an ideal. It has to be a philosophy in some sense. It's not just enough not to eat meat. Yeah. Uh, it's not enough to be forced not to eat meat, yeah. such as in prison. It has to be that this is an I an ideology to some sense yeah. that, that you are pursuing. Yeah. So so okay, let's work with that definition. If you have this ideological sense for veganism, let us say that you have a subjective framework. Okay. Where you say that I accept these axioms subjectively. Mm -hmm. Now according to this moral framework that I've set up, I should be vegan. And they're pursuing vegan for the same emotional appeals, for the same um, uh, desire for logical consistency, or let's say rational consistency within that moral framework. Would you say that's not a vegan? I would say that they've made a mistake in saying that they have these axioms. I would say that the, the, the mistake is assuming that their attribution of a, an axiom to themselves was correct in the first place. Because mm -hmm. I think that if you're a subjectivist, and you're saying that actually, depending on the subjectivist, I mean, because of subjectivism is a very large brand of, unfortunately, sure. for um, to, to you know, tar everyone with the same brush. But many subjectivists, so for example, non-cognitivists, deny the propositional abilities of subjective statements. And even if you take a quasi-realist, the accept that we can make secondary propositions based upon, you know, what I think I value. I would say that the issue is, is that you could only describe yourself as being vegan for a moment and not prescribe that you should be vegan from any given time onwards past that point because as soon as you say that and even in that respect you'd be saying that what i take exploitation to be is something which i find distasteful and that's essentially like exploitation benefit cruelty these things that i find distasteful so as soon as they stop being distasteful or as soon as um even if something was, I thought it was going to be distasteful. Like I, I think I find animal cruelty distasteful, but actually I love it, man. It's great. Like I, I experience it. Then I've nullified my own conception of good in that scenario. Like I, I cannot claim to have known a notion of good. I have destroyed it. I have annihilated it. I have expressed um, a, 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 an, an understanding, not an understanding, rather a, uh, an emotional state, boo hurrah. And I think that as soon as you start being cognitive about the notion of good based upon uh, an emotional state that goes beyond a purely descriptive statement that I think I am this, then I think it becomes nonsensical. As soon as you create a system which applies and prescribes a notion and a way of being, it breaks down. So would you say that there has to be a sensical uh, situation in order for you to be vegan. So not only do you have to have this ideology, uh, it's not enough to substantiate that for a rational um, framework that is um, 
I would say that where there's axioms accepted, perhaps unjustly, but in a in a subjective moral framework, you would say that for the ideology of a vegan to hold true to you, you'd have to be able to substantiate it from the ground up. Well, look at it like this, like like what the word vegan means, let's say, is, let's say, based on this notion of exploitation. And that's based on the notion of evaluation. And that evaluation means that you care about, let's say, cows, chickens, but not pigs. You would then be able to be a vegan who kills pigs under your definition of veganism. So, so, so if, yeah, if you can give me that definition one more time. So I value cows, chickens, and pigs. Yeah. But uh, cows, chickens, and not pigs, rather. That's a very peculiar definition. But it's of totally yeah, but it, but it, it can totally it can be held, right? Yeah, it can be, but um, and people but, do. People I've talked to slaughterhouse. Well, I've, I've seen slaughterhouse workers talk. But I know, talk about hate and lamb, like hate and Actually, and actually, it's not it's not that strange. If, if no, for instance, if there's somebody fish. who uh, knows, well, fish is one example. But even even in in a you can think of peculiar cases where somebody, for instance, is a meat eater but uh, for some reason had like a, a pet pig when they were growing up yeah. and so they just have a special affinity for pigs and so they're okay with killing any yeah, of them. Yeah, but I wouldn't say pigs. that their veganism, it would be a straw man to say that their veganism is defined in such a way as to reference the particular animals that they're happy to, to hurt and happy not to hurt. But at the very least it excludes. Well, no, no but, 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 but that's just, I, I think that's a misdiagnosis. I, I don't think so because be, if you think of what is exploitation. No, because if you ask these people, mm -hmm. why is it you're vegan? They won't give you this, I just have this, pigs should be okay, humans should be okay, chickens should be okay, uh, rabbits, screw them. That, that's not what you'll get. You'll get some kind of appeal to some uh, rational structure in which they're relating to sentience. But then that, that, that is very why, that is the re it, very reason you can say you're not being logically consistent well, even according say, to that framework. You could even say sapiens. So you could be a vegan and just value sapiens or value um, a notion of emotional intelligence and you say that, well, I'm, I, I'm not exploiting anything because it, is not, it doesn't meet, meet this grade of intelligence I, uh, I, in which I think exploitation can only entail to. And I, mm -hmm. I think that must be the case if we were to say that you are subjectivist, that you can just say, I value this. Now, I think that to say that um, you do value that is a mistake. And that's kind of the point. I would say that to say that you do value X or, or that you should value X is an error. And you can't describe that of yourself. If subjectivism is true, descriptivism is all that there is available. So there are different kinds of subjective, uh, subjectivism. And a lot of people would call me a subjectivist and I wouldn't necessarily dispute the term. But what I mean when I say that the, the basis of my ethics is subjective is that I think that every single person desires their own pleasure, and that's the basis of ethics, as we spoke about on my podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that that desire is a subjective desire, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the subjectivism, but everybody shares that subjective desire. So it's, it, it's all still a subjective construct, but I can still say that I, I can kind of point out inconsistencies in the way that someone's working. It's not as simple as them being able to go, well, actually, my subjective desires have changed because they can't. It's always pleasure. Always. But the, 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 the vehicles by which they achieve that desire uh, might change. They might have different conceptions of what will bring them pleasure. But the actual subjective component, which is the, desire, which is the pleasure, can't change. So, yeah, I would say that that's not subjectivism anymore. Um, that's... E even though it's, it's, it, there's no justification for actually that, that you should chase your pleasure it's just that that you do you subjectively believe well, that I think your that's, pleasure is uh, a good all thing. objectivists kind of argue that in the first place i think you even argue something similar the axiomatic ought there is an axiom which grounds within us that we must seek pleasure um i think that i think that for example yeah. um mcintyre who's a robust objectivist he argues very similar i think the functional concept of man um it is entailed within us that we should perform to uh, enable the good life because we do seek the good life it's mm -hmm. not that we choose to seek it right. that, that implies a notion of free will that is not necessary for objective ethics. I don't need to be a libertarian. I just have to believe that there is a, a grounding within me that justifies um, uh, the, the sort of rationality of a, a bedrock of what is right and wrong. And that can be discovered hmm. objectively from my understanding of it. Now, subjectivism, on the other hand, would deny that. It would be like, your understanding, your 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 emotional states, your mental states are all that are taken so into account. on this subjectivist worldview that you're sort of referring to here, the, so not the kind that I would espouse, but the kind of subjective, uh, subjectivism that you'd be criticizing, what is the baseline of value, of it desire? Must, it must be the preference of the agent. 
the preference of the age. But like, what I mean, like, what's the object of the preference? Like, what if, if it's not if it's not kind of always pleasure? Like, are you saying like you can uh, the subjectivists can can desire um, like let's say uh, can desire. I don't know, like like something that I would consider a surface level based on pleasure, but something that they might not like. They desire uh, the goodness of their family, like the, the health Food, of their family. Shelter. Food, shelter. Yeah, like so can, can those be like they desire. things that they, or, or, they, or, they, or let's they, say value or, or prefer. They, they can right? value, desire, anything. So I think desire is imperative. I don't agree with the distinction between preference and desire, but I don't think that's quite relevant to the point, which is that, so whatever word you want to pick, let's say preference. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that people can have a preference for... Uh, uh, as Stephen says, like food or shelter or something like the the health of their family. Oh, of, of course, like for example, you, you could have, um, for example, a sex drive and all these, and like, yeah. with seemingly um, innate drives, but those drives can never be questioned. We can't question those desires. Like in the words of Anne Rand, um, a whim is a desire in which the desirer does not does not care nor wish to know the cause. I think I think that's the quote, and. This would be a criticism of subjectivism. It's like, why don't you care about that which you seek to achieve inherently? And their reply would be that there is nothing in which I seek to achieve inherently. I just express attitudes. If I can bring it back slightly to, to, to me, what this strikes me as, and it may be that I'm missing something, it's, it's little more than a no true Scotsman fallacy. It's saying that this is the parameters that must be met to be a vegan. It's similar to how, um, say, a Catholic would say a real Christian is someone that believes X, Y, and Z. It's like saying a real vegan can substantiate themselves through uh, objective metaethics. Uh, they have to actually uh, have a philosophy around it, not just about food, etc. Oh, because, no. because I would say that if we run with this particular definition, it's, I'd accept it, but I think that you're almost smuggling your all conclusion of, into of, the premise. Yeah, all of the vegans are now not vegan because, I mean, who, who sits there and thinks like, oh yes, I must read Hegel before I'm a, I'm a vegan. Um, or, or someone going, I want to really care about animals, I'm, I'm a vegan and I really care about these ideals, but I just can't substantiate it, so fuck it, bacon. You see, the, what I would say is that what it means to be vegan is um, a concept in which, uh, w w is essentially sentientism. Mm-hmm. Uh, and essentially, if you're a sentientist and you value animals for the sake of their sentience, and you can say that you should value animals for the sake of their sentience, then you're a vegan. Then I think that a subjectivist cannot do that. I think that is the main issue. Metaethically, they might claim that they can, but they don't. And what they are doing is expressing an attitude, a disposition towards valuing a, a thing. With that, It's like, for example, I think I said before, so you might say that I value cake. Like I really like cake. I just mean I can say that you should like chocolate cake. Uh, right. Like, you know. Um, and also if you did try cake and you said, actually, I really hate cake, then saying you value cake would be wrong. Saying you should be vegan could be absolutely uh, incoherent. Saying that something is exploitation um, without having a, a moral experience of it when you're a subjectivist. So I, I just see the cake to be a form and extension of um, avoiding pain or pleasure. Mm. It's, it's probably, it's linguistically more easy, but I really do. But you've created a standard. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that um, <clears throat> you're, you're almost putting the attribute on the cake, not on, on the person, not mm. on the person's preferences, not on the person's. And I, I, think, I think that that's where the reason you get contradictions in that sense is because you've done that. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. But if you don't put the attribute on a logically objective from the individual, then exploitation is like, how would you characterize a feeling of exploitation and whether it applies to animals or not? Like, what does that even mean? Like, what I would say is that in this situation, like, if I was to say, like, uh, you shouldn't exploit a chicken mm. and you say, like, oh, I'm not exploiting, I'm just killing them. Yeah. Uh, and then I go, I don't understand what you mean. You go, this is an exploitation. I can't, I can't pull that into question. You can't pull that into question. Well, why not? Let's, let, let's, really, let's, really, let's really paint this out. Someone yeah. says, uh, by definition, you're exploiting that, uh, that chicken because you're using it as a commodity mm -hmm. for whatever reason. I'd be like, well, how is this exploitation? Right, but this isn't the problem. You, this isn't the problem. For, this isn't the problem just for like moral subjectivism. Like you, you could do this with anything, yeah. right? Even, <laughs> even, even like under my worldview or Steve's worldview, um, I could, uh, we, we could argue about. Uh, I don't know whether or not we're 
whether or not we're filming a video right now, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you could be like, well, by definition, we're filming a video, and I could be like, well, well, by what definition? Well, then, yeah, but then you could give me a definition of what a video is, whether it's occurring, and then I yeah, could but say, the, like, the, could I deny? The, then you could say, then I could say, well, that's not what I thought what video was. Yeah, and then that's that's a semantic problem. But if what I'm saying is the conceptual right, problem. No, but it's, 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 I, I think that this is also a, a semantic problem when someone says you're exploiting animals and someone says, no, I'm not, because this is how I define exploiting animals. It's like, well, that's a semantic issue. But what I consider to be exploitation, you are still doing to those animals, right? No, but let's say like, if you give me a point. definition of exploitation, like yeah, I'm saying using, yeah. using an individual as a commodity. Uh, as a means to an end. Yeah, so I, I so I would say like okay. uh, if if you apply that to human, if you're the type of person who would say like, I'm going to define exploitation as doing that to a human and exclude animals, I'd be like, well, okay, I disagree with your definition, but okay, so in in that case, you're not exploiting animals, yeah. but you are doing this, which yeah. I still think is wrong. Yeah, but then in well, you, so it's you it's not a, it's not a conceptual but then, problem, right? But then, it's still but then, semantic. But that's the thing. If you were to say like, if I was to say that like this is an exploitation, then if I, I could just go, this is not exploitation. Yeah, and I could by, go, by my definition. But in, in the same way that I could say this is not a table by my definition. And it's like, it's, not, the it's, it's is, not a problem. No, no, yeah. You see, you see there, there's a, there is a problem there. Because what a table is defined as is, yeah. infer, is inferentially what a table is. The meaning is grounded in a notion of, of, how a tab, of, of, of its use within language. Well, so you could say this then, according to the axioms that I accept for objective or subjective reasons, this is a table. Well, this is the, this is the thing. Like, I don't think that you could tell me. Like, I don't think you could create independently a concept of a table without another individual, which then verified that. Okay. The point is, is that if someone said this is exploitation, it's not that. Well, no, it, but you, you could still have the table. You just wouldn't call it a table. In the yeah, same way that you could still is, you could still have exploitation the con, the even even if you don't can exist, call it right. But the concept can exist. I don't think the concept, the specific mental ability within the individual can exist when it, in a subjectivist framework. You wouldn't be saying, like, this is exploitation. I'd be saying, you would say exploitation and its meaning would be absent. There would be no ability for that proposition to actually entail whether it is or is not exploitation because it's definitionally, uh, it's definitionally dependent upon your interpretation, which is the rule, which changes even from hearing what it could be. You, like, Assume you cannot think of what your thinking was. You can only think in what your thinking is, in other words. So the act of thinking changes the interpretation. As you constantly try to interpret it, the, it, it becomes a, a moldable, malleable shape. The notion of good is lost. It just seems like you're... you're I, I still don't see how this is distinct to the subjectivity in language generally. As, really, applies to, as, as applied to non-moral I would things. say that the, the difference yeah. is the, the grounding and inference. So, like, uh, language, if it's individual, there is no rule. Right, well, of course, yeah, but, but like, so by language, like, what, I, I mean, like, the, the process by which we just label things that exist, or whether they be physical objects or concepts, right? Yeah, but, like, where do we gain these nouns? Like, 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 like... Well, we just make them up. Would you think we just make them up by ourselves? Like, could I just go around and let's say I was to go around and go like, that's a table, that's a chair, that's a table. Yeah. Like, uh, and I was, to, so, and then I was to go back and I was to go, that's a chair, that's a table, yeah. based on my own understanding. Yeah. So, so obviously that 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 arguably is not is not a language if you're defining language as an ability to communicate with other people. Well, but like, not even just that. If I mean, even if there was demand, if if like, there were more than one hands. person who both agreed somehow through some mystical process, like were immediately able to keep up with each other on precisely what they meant and kept changing their definition, but immediately were up to date with each other. Yeah, that wouldn't be a problem. What right? do you mean like in a scenario where the rule was as malleable as the interpretation? Well, I would say that the language game is simply evolving faster or differently. I just, I, I think the same thing applies. Because like I, I would always be able to turn around to you and I'll go, wait a minute, is that a table? And then you would no. be able to go, Yes or no? See, that would be a problem, perhaps, with uh, truth. Yeah, but you, you either mean two, you might mean two. You, you can mean two things when you say like, is something a table? You either mean like, is that defined as a table, or you can mean is that? There's a million semantic is things. Is that like, what we would call a table? Is think, this an example of one thing, of those? I think, yeah, exactly. I think the thing that is most important is when someone says this is a table, mm -hmm. they're saying that according to the axioms that I accept. This is a table. See, I, I don't think so. I'd say that the they, they are saying defined by can, grammatically. The, the notion of what a table is, this is a table. If I was to just go, like for example, how many of you, like, like the viewers or, or yourselves would go, this is a chair, would tell me I was wrong. 
I would say if your framework has made it so that that is defined as a chair uh, and it fits that framework, yeah. then perhaps you... It, you but but also oh, be, be careful here because there are two ways you can interpret that question, right? So you either mean, um, I define this as a chair, mm -hmm. like this falls under my conception of what a chair is. Like, I don't mean switching the name of the, the concept. Right, but this is where the confusion lies. So if you said, this is a chair, if what you mean is like, uh, based on our common understanding of what a chair is, right? This is an example of one of those. I say yes, you're wrong. But if you just decide to say, no, no, I'm I, I'm changing my conception of what a chair is. This is this is a chair. I can't say you're wrong. And, See, this and, is, and if you, change I, I can't it. even say I disagree with you. I, I, I just say I have a different conception. Yeah. But it doesn't actually disagree with any of the substance uh, of what you're talking it's about. Just to go to that it's just a different approach. Thing. Yeah. Um, if you're defining p as something, say x and then um, you reinterpret it, you redefine it, mm -hmm. and then you and you somehow get like a negation. The mm -hmm. fact that you've redefined it doesn't mean that you have P and not P. It means you just have like P and Q. Well, yeah, but in which the, uh, the point is, is that the word, if we are to say in an inference, should follow, um, you know, uh, what is it like? If P, then Q, um, Q, then P. And this is essentially the Geech, uh, yeah, the Geech uh, Frege embedding problem, you'd say that P and P in the conclusion are two separate entities. So to say that you should value animals as because of exploitation, you'd say that if you want to avoid exploitation towards animals, then uh, you should avoid X or, Q, or Q. Uh, you avoid Q, therefore P, you know. Exploited, you've avoided exploitation. Yeah, but again, if someone the two, said, the two it, notions it, of exploitation if might I, be it, entirely different. I don't know. I, I, I think I'm just thinking of this in another dim, kind of dimension of thought to you. Like when I say, like, if you disagree with the exploitation of animals, then you should be a vegan. And someone says, I do disagree with exploitation. Um, I shouldn't think exploitation applies to animals. And I'd be like, well, then, like, that, that's not actually contradicting the premise. It's just contradicting like the interpretation of the premise, like the actual substance of the premise is still sound. There's something to be said about people applying, for example, the metaethical framework to a normative framework as well. Like how many people do you know that are genuinely like, for example, Maki, he, he says that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what metaethical framework you have, as long as you apply it to the, no like you don't have to apply it to your normative framework. You can speak as if morals are objective. Yeah. And we do. Yeah. And subjectivists always do. Yes. Like how many subjectivists do you go there? Oh, well, like, you know, we should not murder, but at well, the same to, time, to, to, to an extent, some, I mean, like, because like, like, according to their worldview, when they say that you shouldn't do something, that doesn't actually imply objectivity, right? Mm -hmm. When like a subjectivist can say like, yeah, no, you should not murder and like the fact that they don't qualify that by saying but that's based on a subjective impulse doesn't mean they're talking about it as though it's objective. Mm -hmm. Like it, like they can still be totally within the realm of subjectivity. They can still be applying their metaethical. Well, this is the thing I'd say if they're applying the metaethical view, then they're using thick moral concepts, but without considering that their interpretation of these concepts is actually um, falls under like GE Moore, you know, mm. um, the the this notion of good. What is it? Yeah. It's it's a. What was he? I think. What's the the word? That, the open, the open, the uh, open, the open it, question. Argument, yeah, the yeah. open question argument. What do you mean by exploitation? Yeah. And everyone's going to stand. Is up it and really call. exploitation? Is yeah. it Really? It's is it really good? Is it really yellow? Mm -hmm. um, but Gene Moore's response to that is just to say, but, but we know what it is conceptually, right? Gene Moore's an objectivist, and he goes, yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he says it's uh, self-evident. Yeah, which I disagree with. But you can you can you can understand the kind of point that he makes in terms of like with the comparison to the color yellow famously that although you know we we might struggle to define exactly what yellow is we can't define it right you can mm -hmm. define it as in terms of electromagnetic uh, wavelengths but that's not what yellow is as experienced however despite all that like conceptually like when we see yellow we know what it is and like as a concept we know what it is and if we have a slightly different conception of like what we would call yellow and where the boundaries of the concept would be drawn like substantively we're still kind of experiencing the same thing, right? Well, not, well, not experiencing yeah, the same thing. I would say that the only way you can know that yellow was the same thing is only through uh, an embedding of a concept within a rule that would dictate its use, which relates to certain objects and whether it can be verified or falsified. I think otherwise it's um, it's like saying, for example, you know, something, if you ever, like, you know, when you see Christians and they try and define God, and if you ever heard saying like people try and talk about God and they're just constantly disagreeing on what, what, what a God is, what it does, how it exists. Um, same thing with yellow. I think that you wait, is it or is it not yellow? At what point does yellow become orange? At what point yeah. does, you know, um, I can't think of another color that 
is anywhere on the spectrum towards yellow, but it's somewhere along those yeah, but lines. Although, although that's arbitrary so and subjective, you can still say that something is yellow. They're not vegan. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, I think if you disbelieve in the, the, the color of yellow, then you're not vegan. Uh, you know, but I think the point is, is that I think that if we don't ground, um, or like, I think that it, it impacts us in such a way that it's done implicitly. Like I look at a yellow, uh, like, and when I go, like, that's cold. And I may be right inductively, but then for my, me to have knowledge on that situation, I go, is that gold? And I think you might turn around and go, yes, it is gold. Or you might go, no, Lewis, you've taken acid as the, the guy told you, and that is in fact not gold. And, uh, and I'll be like, well, it tastes like gold. And, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, you can have this sort of uh, discussion on it. And I think the, the point of what I'm trying to make is that if you're, a, if you're, an, if you're an actual subjectivist who uh, argues that moral inferences have nothing to do with um, ontological facts and instead are embedded within our uh, expressions or, or taste sensations then the reality is you'll be like does this taste the same as that thing you tasted before does this taste the same altogether and i think that the reality is is that there is nothing beyond induction which can allow you to for the argument to flow you could say that it is an argument from induction and that you inductively can be a vegan i have no real problem with that but then you wouldn't be able to know if you were that you wouldn't know if you were a vegan Oh, you, but, you, but you'd call them a vegan. You could call yourself. You, I would say that you that you could call yourself a vegan, but then I wouldn't know what you mean, and no one could know what you mean, right. and you not necessarily know what you mean either. You just think you do. Yeah, I've got to say I'm not. I'm not convinced. But, that's fine. That's but fine. I, th- I think um, a large part of it will be that you're incredibly well read. Uh, I'm sure there's there's things that I have. Oh, only friends to disagree with us. If that's any consideration, there. A lot of them have PhDs. So. <laughs> I, I always. <laughs> No, but well, thanks for sharing it with me. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll give it some more thought. Um, mm. Perhaps we can revisit it in the future because I'm sure we'll work together this again. I'll, I'll give it some more thought, but I, I still think there's a confusion happening between this, the kind of definitional level and the substantive level of saying what something is. But I, I, I'd want to listen back to what you're saying and, and mm. give it some thought. I, I, I hope the audience understand what I mean when I say that I think that distinction is not being, um, not being fully addressed. No, oh, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it's a complicated one. It's it's not something that it's easy to to move over anyway. Yeah. Like it's uh, and you know I can't say that I'm 100 percent right. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to to run this by yeah. you guys because I think you're very you know articulate and well um, well established philosophically. And I think that if there's any people that can give us like after criticism and critique, it's uh, it's you two. Mm. It is one of the reasons why I wanted. The well, that that would be my critique as as far as I understand what you're saying so far is that the the problem that you're kind of identifying is not actually a problem. The reason you think it's a problem is because you're attributing uh, an arbitrariness in the definitional level of what things are mm. to an arbitrariness in the, in the substantive level of what things are. And, and I guess what I would say from my perspective is that it's, it feels like a form of the uh, no true Scotsman in which you're begging the question by defining your conclusion into existence. Mm. And that is that you need, cer- you need to have certain attributes um, or you need to have certain things, such as the metaphoric, in order to be vegan. Therefore, people who don't have this metaphoric are not vegan. For me, I see that as uh, as probably my biggest contention. Mm. Mm. I guess I should as well have been clear. Like, it's not that I, that they could not be vegan in the sense that they could not be living by the ethics of a scenario that, like, by accident, it's that they could not intentionally be a vegan. That they they could not intentionally gain that ethical uh in, engagement within what it means to be a vegan and, and i think that obviously you, i think you probably still say it uh hits the fallacy because if i'm saying what it means to be a vegan you'd be saying that well you've defined it in in that definition but i say what it means to be a vegan is defined in the concept of what it means to to exploit an animal and that that the exploitation of an animal is definable that i can define that as exploitation because that's what it is, and that's defined by the notion of suffering and good, which is understandable. And if we haven't got that notion, if we haven't got that um, evidence position, then exploitation doesn't exist. And this is why, I mean, many people disagree with this, but if I would argue if moral objectivism is not true, uh, nihilism is. So there we go. Uh, but it's been really great, guys. I really appreciate you having yeah. us on, and uh, you know, in my studio. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's been you know if you call it my studio, I am you and you and I see that's the thing see, yeah. would you tell us I'm wrong now <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's the thing if you want to if you want to hear us argue a bit more about uh, identity and 
what yeah. it means to to be me or to be you or in whose place this is if it's even my place who knows <laughs> um we did record that record that podcast it's a shame i you know this is I, this is a conversation that deserves longer time Very spent yeah. but if we go any longer then i wouldn't be able to get the first, I get go get home, the first man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man yeah. Yeah, but yeah I, hope you, I hope you don't feel like you had enough time to put out your argument for us to raise some decent criticisms and then you don't have enough time to really unpack yeah, it. Oh, it. no, it's fine. I, I understand but that. We can very revisit it anyway. But I, I, to be honest, I'd like to I'd, I'd like to have a bit more time for reflection before I revisit it. Anyway. Oh, yeah, that's so, great. Uh, and you get to pin whatever comment you make at the bottom of your own video. So therefore, I would actually, can, I, I think what is quite useful in the sense that you yep. put forward a view, I put forward a, a kind of fairly surface level criticism. So Steve, and we can look at the, when the video comes out, we can look at how people have kind of taken it because they might say like, well, I didn't understand what you said by this. I didn't understand what you said by we that. Me only worry is just that um, that uh, people just go, Lewis, you're high. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and you know what? Maybe they're right. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, you know, like, it, it, let's just say that that is the case. This is a wonderful exercise. Yeah. It I, really is. I do it's, hope, it is, I do hope it is, it is that it's not an exercise in futility in this sense. It's it? It, it no. definitely won't be in futility. And um, as I said, I'm going to watch it back because cause I respect you and I think you're well learned. And I think I want to make sure that I haven't missed something because it does happen. And uh, yeah, I want to see how, I want to see how the audience is. I think like, the audience yeah, actually. Yeah. I'm, how, I'm, how, I'm they, how they like about. interpret the, yeah. the, the, the discussion we're having. Because if like everyone starts saying like, wait, what 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 the hell is this? Is he talking about with this? Then I I can recognise that I've either done something wrong or I haven't expressed it properly. So oh, I mm. should say because this happens every damn time I collaborate with vegans. I know I'm a hypocrite. Okay, <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. I'm the worst of all worlds. You can spam his um, comment section <laughs> with right. Steve go vegan. It actually engagement. it actually does well for his engagement. Hey, so go we, ahead. Can we make that a hashtag? I have the <laughs> hashtag <laughs> Steve, go, Steve, Steve go, go vegan. vegan. Yeah. Yeah. It, it even it even sounds like nice as yeah, a hashtag. It does. It works yeah, well. there yeah. we go. But anyway, that brings our twenty minute <laughs> <laughs> conversation to a close, as, yeah. as planned. Oh, <laughs> um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah.